Hey guys, welcome back to Murad on Run. And in today's video, we have Bani with us. So Bani did her bachelor's from India itself, from Punjab University in engineering. Then she decided, okay, engineering nahi karna. Then she came to Canada and started with MIM from Solik Business School, which I used to think was the best school. But she is telling me that kisi kisi cheez mein hi best hai. Hey, don't say like that. I mean, it's one of the top five B schools, so you can't objectively say that this school is the best. This is not. So it's best for marketing, but for finance, Rotman is the best. So that right. exactly. So Rotman is the best, and we also shot a video in Rotman. Okay. But the point being, she came from engineering, then she, then she did MIM, and now she's working for a pharmacy. No, not a pharmacy. <laughs> a pharma company. Okay, so she. Uh, can you please tell us a bit about your experience till now in Canada? Sure. So, why I came to Canada was because I wanted that exposure of studying abroad, and I wanted to explore a different culture altogether. So that was my basis. Why I did my MIM was because I didn't want to study engineering. I wanted to explore the business fundamentals and my experience. I'm loving it. Apart from my family, I think I don't miss anything else, <laughs> and my friends. Yeah. So uh, one thing. Uh, how hard was it to have a transition? Mm-hmm. From engineering to management. That's a good question. I would say it was seamless because in engineering also we do study a lot of technical subjects and there are quantitative subjects which actually a lot of local students are afraid of because that comes naturally to us. So finance, accounting, that wasn't a problem. So I would say that yeah, it wasn't difficult. Okay, talking about the university, the Shulik Business School that mm-hmm. you ended up in. So, how hard is it generally to get into a university or a good B school? Okay, so there are two components. One is your percentage should be really good because Canada is focused on a lot on academics, and the second thing is your overall profile. So, I did have, I would say, a good overall profile as well. Apart from what is academics. a good percentage? I would say. Eighty percent or above would be really good. In our school or in our university? In university, they don't care about schools. Yeah. So, so for your bachelors. Eighty percent, you're saying, is a good score. Yes. Eighty percent or above. Uh, most of the B schools have this condition: seventy-five percent or above, just to be eligible. Just to be eligible, seventy-five yeah. percent or above. So, if you're looking at any specific school, which university would be having this criteria of seventy-five percent? All the top B schools, all the top universities. This is pretty consistent, seventy-five or even seventy-seven percent for some. So, if you do want to get into to the top B schools or universities, work on your academics. And the other thing is your profile. Specifically for the B schools, they want to have diversity in their classroom. So you just mention in the SOP what's your unique attribute, and that would sell a lot. Okay, so if I have to stand out, mm-hmm. what are the things that I should be mentioning in my SOP? Okay. So one thing is, don't just mention what you have done. Nobody cares about that. Mention what you have done. What's the impact that you created? Because you were the person who did that. It can be just any volunteer work. Also, everyone does that. But maybe you did something. You taught someone and motivated someone to become a police officer, and they felt that it's beyond their How reach. How do I mention that in an SOP? So, uh, B schools have different essay prompts. Sometimes okay. it's just supplementary information form. You can say anything. Whereas for some B schools, they specifically ask highlight your leadership or extra character, so you can use that space. So if I have to make my profile a bit more holistic, mm-hmm. what are the things that I should definitely have in my profile? I would say it's not about having five six things. Academics, yes, you should have. Apart from that, it can be just one thing as well. But that one thing you do better than anyone else, or you are in the top ten to any percentile. Let's say you are a YouTuber. But you are a YouTuber with 100k. It can be a tech channel. It can be your lifestyle vlogs. Or it so, can be like rugby. Yeah. Randomly going to different countries and doing some very bakwasa content, shooting some very bakwasa content. I wanted to hear a little bit of praise. No, 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 yeah, Murad, you are such a good person. Ah, I crave validation. Acha sa comment likh dena, yar. Also, do hit the like button. Each me bol raha hu, but kya kar dena? Yeah, sorry. I'm so sorry. So yeah, uh, how do I make my profile a bit more holistic? So you're saying focus on one thing. 
ये तो थिंग इज पीपल थिंक कि ये भी कर लें लेट्स गो टू वॉल्टियर वर्क एज वेल लेट्स ओपन स्टार्टअप एज वेल यू नो चाहे वो बहुत कम स्केल का हो फाइव टेन पीपल इन ईयर बट एक चीज पकड़ो विच यू आर जेनरली इंटरेस्टेड इन अब ये नहीं कि वी आर डिस्कसिंग यूट्यूब चैनल लाइफ स्टाइल ब्लॉग्स दैट यू स्टार्ट डूइंग दैट इट कैन बी दैट यू प्ले द गिटार रियली वेल एंड देन यू गो एंड परफॉर्म एंड यू डू हैव सम प्रूफ दैट यू कैन शो केस इट नीड नॉट बी अ सर्टिफिकेट इट कैन बी योर लाइफ स्टोरी वन गुड थिंग अबाउट वी स्कूल इज दैट इट्स नॉट लाइक अ जॉब इंटरव्यू दैट दे आर गोइंग टू स्क्रूटनाइज यू इज दिस पर्सन लाइंग दे आर गोइंग टू बिलीव एवरीथिंग यू से बट again in the interview if you are lying that's going to come out so just be careful about that that will always pop out yeah. like exaggerating is something i always do but uh, lying is something that is off the table uh, yeah that's a good point and even i have heard this that if you are applying for universities and you have one thing that makes you stand apart one thing that you best at so that would any day help you with your application understandable how much was your fees approximately 25 to 30 Twenty five to thirty lakh rupees you paid for your fees. Yeah. What happened with your entire batch? Did mm-hmm. and specifically what happened with the cream of the classroom? Mm-hmm. What are they doing? Hope most probably or hopefully you are in that cream. And what happened with the lower ten fifteen percent of the classroom? Okay. So it's very difficult to judge uh, where a person fell because it's not based on the percentage in the in classroom. Terms of, in terms oh, of oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I also okay. wanted to understand that yeah yeah, yeah sorry. Okay. So one thing is if you are thinking that you will get all A's and that will help you a lot in the job market that's not the truth apart from some consulting firms which do grill you on your GMAT on your percentage because they get a lot of applicants so they have to have a filter right but for all the other companies i would say just having the experience aligned with what you want to do the job description that matters more than your grades one more thing <laughs> so i'm specifically asking in terms of masters if a person is coming for masters should he or she have experience or is it fine if they come without experience because i understand you came without experience that's a good question so all my questions are good questions yeah <laughs> I uh, did come without any work experience. Fortunately, things worked out well for me. But I have seen a few students who came without any work experience, and getting that first job was difficult for them because they didn't have any tangible skill set on their resume that they can convince that they can just hit the ground running, right? I understand. So, if you have experience in a really good company, I would say definitely take it because. Let's say you get into one of the big four in India. That's a lot easier compared to if you want to get into the same company in Canada. So if you have that brand name on the resume, that's going to help you a lot. But if it's uh, just a normal company, no specialized skill set, then doesn't matter. You can come right away. But let's say if you are a coder and you really love what you do, get some experience in India, and if you are really good at that. I would say don't spend, don't waste that money on seventy, eighty k on a university degree. If you have confidence in your skill set, even a PG diploma would work wonders for you. If you are willing to go that hard mile, that extra one mile, because I won't deny the fact that university the reputation It's would get you more interview calls. But if you can save fifty k. By working maybe one or two months more, applying to hundred, two hundred jobs more, that will eventually pay off. So yeah, again, the point being, if you're good at something that you do, most probably my Instagram, most probably not the best, but thoda sa good at what I'm doing. So most probably my application in that sense becomes stronger. So you have to find your own pace. You have to find your own thing. Mm. It should not be like if Bani is saying big four, so big four रहने वाला है. If Bani is saying ये वाली company, तो ये वाली company रहने वाली. What she's trying to say is, in general, if there is one thing you can be good at, that is something you should be focusing on. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. एक और चीज़ है. So there's this one thing uh, that if you are very skilled at one thing. that's going to be better than you being a generalist especially in canada that pays more there are more demand for those jobs as well so agar coding pasand hai dive deep into that agar let's say you are into sales even that pays well if you are into accounting or finance that pays well to aisa nahi ki maine bol diya ki sales ya fir what did i say coding to wahi karna hai uh, what was that saying jack of all trades master of none right 
so exactly that stands out yeah coming back to the topic i wanted to understand what happened with the lower 10 15% of the classroom so they ended up paying 30 lakh rupees what is their roi till now so i would say all the indian students because they are the ones who paid this much the local students got a lot of scholarships unki fees bhi kam hai so i would say that everyone eventually within a year ended at good companies in good roles Uh, the local people, honestly, some people said that, oh, I'm going to go to the cottage because they have their family to fall back on, right? So they didn't care that much. So I can't speak to what happened in terms of salary, but I do know that everyone is doing something. But for the Indian people, because they have invested so much, I would say they are at about after one year of experience, everyone is at about. 60 to 80k mostly 70 to 80k that's the base salary how much would a person be saving at a salary of 70k mm-hmm. like it depends i understand it depends on the kind of life you're living but then an average person how much would he be saving so a person who gets 70k at the end of 2 weeks would get roughly 2000 dollars depending on the company because the taxation thing is different So four thousand dollars, let's say for one month, and I would say that you can live comfortably in fifteen hundred dollars. So you're still saving twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but by comfortably, I means uh, not a car. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. Like you're meeting your basic requirements. Mm, rent, grocery, bills. So if you're saving twenty five hundred, that's thirty thousand dollars. What you're trying to say like, in a year? In a year. I would say yes, that's doable. But then a lot of miscellaneous expenses also come up. So let's suppose five thousand dollars less. So twenty five hundred dollars is what you can save. Uh, let's just keep it two thousand dollars to be on the conservative side. Yeah, that's twenty four hundred, twenty four thousand dollars. Okay. So you will be covering your entire tuition fees like within a year or two. Within two years. Within two years, two you will be covering your entire tuition fees. One more thing I had a doubt was. Uh, I talk to a lot of people who graduated from Humber and Humber being amongst the best colleges mm-hmm. out there. Uh, they told me that they, you do not actually learn anything here in the classroom. In the classroom, the general degrees that you're doing, it's actually what you were studying in India, just an additional version of it. Just that it is more practical, more hands-on. That, that's it. I think they might have choose. A similar course to what they studied in the undergrad. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to understand. You came here for an MIM. Yeah. Did you feel like you were learning extremely new concepts, which was exactly applicable in the work life? Uh, exactly applicable in the work life. I think no. <laughs> we school teaches hundred percent curriculum. That most of it was theoretical, but we did have enterprise consulting project where we applied all our learnings from the entire curriculum, and we actually had to. Uh, projects with startups where we worked on actual business problems the curriculum of course was theoretical but then a part of that which we were graded on was working directly with clients so shulik provided us with that platform so that was good but i wouldn't say that i didn't learn anything one but the factor might be because it was entirely new for me accounting finance but what if you were coming was there any of your friends who actually felt like okay this is not something new that i'm learning here Okay, so uh, the rationale behind that is MIM for Shulik that is exclusively for non-business graduates. So to ensure, because the business people would have already studied accounting, finance, strategy, right? Uh-huh. So that would be redundant for them. So they wouldn't give the admission to those people. Uh, okay, my question is amongst the final questions that I have: mm-hmm. What is a good GMAT score for an Indian? Okay, I would say seven hundred or above. Why? Because it's not the US, but the Indians tend to score higher on GMAT, so that's what the expectation the admission committee has. So, to be on the safe side, seven hundred or above, because you'll also be eligible to scholarships. I know certain schools which provide scholarships if you have seven twenty or above. So that's another thing. But if you have an overall really good file, even six fifty, six eighty would do. But for that, you have to compensate in other areas. Okay, is it possible to get scholarships? Have you seen people get scholarships around you? Compared to the US, it's pretty less, but yes, for MBA specifically, there are scholarships. But it won't be full ride 
फुल राइड स्कॉलरशिप वेरी हार्ड टू गेट I usually post a lot of content around full ride scholarships, so you should check out my Instagram page. Also, you should check out Bani's Instagram page and Bani's YouTube channel. Thank you so much for taking out the time. I've already left a few links of her profile in the bio. Do check them out. Thank you so much for taking out the time. If you watched this video till here, obviously you did, and. do watch this video if you like this video definitely this is something that would be more interesting thank you